Let's play a game. How many suppressors do you think that B&T makes? 20? 40, how about 60? You're probably not even close. B&T actually makes just over 100 suppressors, and that is craziness. You see, whereas most companies focused on generalized suppressors that cover a wide range of guns, b and a little bit different. They play in a lot of specialty items. Take this Mark 23 can, by example. No, not that one, the b and can. Or take this Trilug only can on my b and SPC-9. Do you like suppressed MP7s though? Here's the thing though, I lied to you earlier when I told you that B&T makes just over 100 suppressors because I thought the real answer might be almost unbelievable. Because the reality is B&T makes just over 600 suppressors. You might imagine making that many different cans that B&T's gotten quite good at it over the years. Today, we are gonna look at their latest, greatest 5.56 reduced back pressure can. The interesting thing is, I've never shot this can prior to right now, so we are gonna shoot it, burn it down, and find out what the is up. All right, here we are. Some uh, first rounds. <laughs> Haven't shot this yet. Literally, very first rounds. So, let's just see what we get. <laughs> How about that, though? So, I'll go ahead and give you all of my thoughts, and we'll go ahead and do the entire review after two rounds. That is what sometimes happens on gun videos, gun reviews. Guys, we do actual testing here. Today's a little bit different. I'm just telling you, when you see someone doing the review after two rounds, be a little bit skeptical of that. I haven't shot this gun in a while either. It's kind of nice to get the old knights out, you know? All right. Get her cooking nice and quick here. All right, time for a glove. All right, definitely after 60 fast, hard rounds like that, it is uh, glove time. Okay guys, before we get too far ahead of ourselves, let's talk about just some sort of disclosures, give you guys a fair shake on everything that's happening here. So the can came to me from B&T. Um, I'm getting the can just before it launches. Um, I got a good relationship with b and I'm not gonna act like I'm completely unbiased in this. I like those guys. Um, we've got a good relationship. That doesn't mean I can't come here and give you a fair shake, but it's also fair for you to know like, hey, that is a good um, you know, relationship for us. So this is the SRBS556 full size uh, DM. Uh, I think that is stands for direct mount. Don't quote me on that, but that would seem like a logical statement. So this is basically the slimline reduced back pressure system. They've also got this in 762 and 762 TI, which if you ever see TI on a suppressor, just stands for titanium, right? So lighter weight. Um, this particular can is a silencer shop exclusive, okay? Um, by the time this video is out, the cans will just have launched. So if you like what you see here today, you can go type in silencer shop and figure it the, figure it the fuck out, you know what I'm saying? Um, so anyway, quick approval times right now. That is one thing I would tell you in regards to um, What's happening with NFA items, a lot of people get confused about short barrel rifles and suppressors in particular. Uh, yeah, one, they're legal. Yes, you can own these in uh, the vast majority of states. And historically, it takes quite a while to go through the paperwork, get everything approved. Right now, we are in this like Goldilocks era that hopefully lasts forever, but at least at the moment, um, very 
quick approval times on the Form 4s that you would need in order to get a suppressor like this. So um, Silencer Shop does that make does make that process a lot easier with their kiosk system and all that kind of stuff. Highly suggest you t check that out. I'm slurring words here, guys. It's like uh, I've shot too much today, so um, I'll try to clean it up. But anyway, that is the nature of the can, where it came from. Again, if you like what you see, check out Silencer Shop, and uh, we'll go ahead and move on with the video. Okay, guys, here at the start of the day, uh, let's just kind of talk about what it is that I'm looking for in a can. Um, there's half a dozen criteria, and it's just kind of a basic outline that, you know, you might get some value of, or at the very least, here's the half a dozen things that I'm looking at. Number one, sound reduction. How well does it do that? I don't think that you should overhype that point, depending on the caliber, but sound reduction obviously is a point. Number two, Weight, weight does become important, especially on the nature of the gun and you know getting front heavy, things like that. Number three, I'm looking at back pressure, especially for me as a lefty, it does become very important. And I like my gear and I want it to survive as long as possible, so I'm not trying to beat the gun apart. Number four, mounting and basically the attachment system. That could be direct thread, that could be QD, um, but basically how does the can go on? Is it, does it carbon lock on? Like what are we dealing with on that? Repeatable POI shift, um, basically just like, hey, as the gun or as the can comes on and off the gun, is my zero staying the, the same? Or is it like, hey, I got a nice tight zero, can comes off because I got to travel, and then the can goes back on, and my zero is totally different again. Um, are we chasing a zero or is it consistent POI shift? And then the last one for me, which is for me personally not a huge point, um, is flash that depends based on what you're using a suppressor for if you're in the military if you're a civilian whatever it might be but flash would be the other one so um we've got a little bit of rounds on this so we're just going to keep shooting burn it down see how it does let's talk about sound reduction so depending on caliber i believe you should place varying degrees of emphasis on sound reduction do you throw a suppressor on your gun because you want it to be louder no of course not but depending on the caliber and the nature of the gun, uh, some things are gonna sound great suppressed, some are gonna kinda suck suppressed. 556 inherently is not great suppressed because for those of you that don't know, just basic crash course here, 556 is a velocity dependent round, AKA it needs to go about, give or take, 2,500 feet per, per second in order to do its job, which is basically tumble once it, once it hits its target. So you can't shoot subsonic. What does that mean? Well, that means that every time you pull the trigger on a 5.56 gun, you're cracking the sound barrier. So there's a limit to how much noise reduction you're truly gonna get. It's never gonna sound great. Now, if you swap over to a uh, nine mil, 300 blackout, 45, where you can run subs, or 45 inherently is subs, um, once you are not breaking the sound barrier, it can sound a lot better. All I'm saying, my point to this is, hey, there is a limit, and for those of you that don't shoot a lot of suppress, you're like, why are you wearing ears in a suppressor video? Because inherently, it's going to be loud. It's going to be less loud, but um, it is still going to be a fairly noisy experience where you're just not going to want to blow your ears out all day. That said, um, I do want to shoot a couple of rounds without ears just to hear it, just to try to kind of gauge it. I don't do this a lot because I enjoy my hearing and I shoot a lot, so I don't shoot a lot without ears um, even suppressed. So the first round here could have a little bit more first round pop, and the second round might tone down a little bit. I say might because, I don't know, the rounds I've shot today are all with ears. So I'm only going to do a couple rounds of this, but first round. Okay. Okay, so again, am I going to do that all day? No. Pause. So my ears are not ringing though. That's what I was pausing to see. Like, hey, am I getting rung? Um, as we would say, the answer is no, I, I, I feel fine. So to be perfectly candid with you, that actually sounds better than I thought it was going to sound because on lower back pressure cans, that's kind of one of the trade-offs, right? Is they typically don't sound as good um, because of the sort of um, reduced back pressure flow through system, whatever it is that you want to call it. Um, that actually sounded pretty good. You got to keep in mind it's a full length, um, suppressor, so it is a full-size can versus a compact can, um, but it's also on an 11 and a half inch AR, which inherently is gonna be louder just because the shorter ARs are louder. So I would say, hey, on noise reduction, that actually sounded pretty good. I fear how this shot looks. Okay, so I'm about uh, 10 to 15 yards off the gun here. All crispy visuals over there is gonna shoot a few rounds. Let's see what I think over here. Deep, deep. It's a deep tone. Yeah. It's a deep tone. Yeah, it's not cracky, it's thuddy. Okay. 
Yeah, just keep going. Just work through that mag. Nice, okay. Yeah, so that's a, a deeper tone can for sure. Um, for those of you, again, that don't shoot a ton of suppressed, sometimes it's about sound reduction, sometimes it's also about changing the tone. Why would you wanna do that? Oh, because if you're in a professional uh, organization, military, law enforcement, things like that, changing tone can be pretty key so that you can identify, hey, if it's friendly rounds or um, hostile rounds, if you will. Um, don't take my word for that. I'm just a civilian out um, in the desert acting like an asshole, but that is um, kind of a rough understanding of what it is. So anyway, the can does actually sound good. It sounds better than I thought. Uh, definitely a deep sort of a throaty, a throaty tone. Yeah, not bad. Okay, up next on sort of my list of things that I look for in a can is weight. And it's not to say that I'm necessarily looking for a lightweight can, it's just to say that weight in general is a conversation piece. So we'll talk a little bit about weight in relation to this can. Um, everything's trade-offs, right? There's no free lunch. That's the case with almost any gun and almost anything in life for that matter. Hey, you wanna date the perfect 10? Cool, it's trade-off, fellas. Prepare to go broke. Ask me how I know. It hurt, it hurt. Level level 10 hot, level 10 crazy boys. So um, different cans for different applications, that's oftentimes how I think about it. There are lighter weight cans, you can get titanium or, or other materials, and yeah, it might be lighter, but is it gonna have the same service life and durability of something like this, which is Inconel? I'm not telling you what the right answer is there. I'm just saying, hey, you gotta consider these things when you're looking at a can. So this particular SRBS is meant to be a hard use, bomb proof can. Um, this is meant to be kind of one of those like end of the world apocalypse style things where you're like, yeah, she's gonna go for quite a while. So full auto rated, no barrel length restrictions. That's fairly common these days that you would see that. Um, but this is 3D printed from 718 Inconel, which again, very, very tough material. There's also not gonna be welds in this. So again, failure points and everything are, are kind of reduced down to a minimum there. It is 8.1 inches on the full size. So that is something to keep in mind. This is a full size suppressor. BNT does also make compact suppressors. I have some other compact suppressors, um, but this can, the Silencer Shop exclusive run of this in the 762, um, those are full length cans. So with the QD system that I have, which is a Surefire style, style mount, we will talk about that. It comes in at 8.1 um, inches. On a full length gun, I might be a little hesitant to go with a can that long on a shorter gun. I'm actually perfectly okay with it. So this is um, Knight's uh, SR15, 11 and a half inch barrel. And with that full length can on, I don't mind it actually. It, it's, it's actually perfectly adequate to me. Uh, when I first heard eight inches before I got the, the can in, um, I was almost like, ooh, that might be a little long for me. But getting it in, throwing in an SPR, it, it actually felt right at home to me. So again, weight on this is gonna be 18 point, or just call it 18 ounces with the Surefire mount. So again, I saw that stat before I had the can. I mean, literally I got the can in a couple of days ago. We don't really do like impromptu videos like this. This was a little bit of a last minute kind of like, hey, let's try to do a video so that there's some video to come out when the thing's launched. So 18 uh, ounces, I was kind of like, I don't know about that, man. Shockingly, it doesn't feel front heavy to me. I thought it, in my head, I was going, boy, it's gonna be a real front heavy gun at this point. But part of it is because I got a lightweight gun, that added little bit of weight up front is really, it's not impacting anything. It's, it's actually balancing out pretty nicely on like a quad rail MR556 or something like that, super beefy gun. Yeah, I'd probably start to steer towards a, a little bit lighter can, but on sort of more of a slim line style build like this, it feels totally adequate. What you looking at, nerds? Keep driving. Keep driving, pork chop. Literally looks like me as a child if I never exercised and lived at Krispy Kreme. So one other thing I would note on the, um, the weight of the suppressor is quite a bit of that is coming from the uh, the QD system of the Surefire style mount. It's not actually a Surefire mount, Surefire style mount. We'll talk about that as we go. So when I got the can and it didn't have anything threaded in, into the hub system, we'll talk about that as well. Um, I was like, oh, this is actually a pretty lightweight can. And then when I threw the mount in, I was like, okay, cool. That's where probably half the weight is inside of the mount. And because 
and you look at the can, Captain Obvious over here, but because the mount is obviously towards the back of the can versus all the way up front, then again, it creates more of a balance where you're not really getting this front heavy type experience. So, hey, the length and the weight to me at first, I was like, I don't know about that, man, but in person, it's actually going a lot better than it is when you just read it as a spec sheet. Okay, that's it on weight. Did you say eight inches felt right at home? <sighs> the whole time I was talking about eight inches, I, I was really trying to navigate that and I was having a hard time. <laughs> uh, it, just, it couldn't, like if Chris was here, I know that would have gone differently. Oh, yeah. Like that would have just been a roast <laughs> battle. I almost lost it. I almost lost it. Okay, so let's talk about um, one of the things that I'm gonna look for when I'm testing a can that is, you know, build as low back pressure. So kind of one of the little hacks, I, I guess it doesn't take a genius to figure this out, but, um, Recoil response, gas in the face. These are a couple things that obviously you can pay attention to to notice how much blowback there is. Another thing you can do is um, just look at your bolt throughout the day, right? Um, so uh, my my nights here, it's good to be shooting this bad boy again. So I really haven't shot this gun in quite a while. And I once called this like my, my zombie apocalypse gun and it, and it still might be. But um, I took it apart for the first time yesterday in a long time. It was super carboned up and uh, cleaned everything, oiled it. And so I'm just kind of gauging throughout the day. Right now we're at 180 rounds is the time of filming this. and um, I'm just kind of taking a gauge of the bolt and going, all right, 180 rounds on a DI gun, right? This is not a piston gun on a high back pressure can. You're going to start to to notice it. It's not that the gun's not going to run, but you're just going to start to see the carbon, the fouling, everything that's building up. I'm really not seeing a lot here. Oil seems to be holding on pretty good, which obviously as there's, there's more heat, that's going to burn off more of the oil. So the bolt is holding up pretty good, really not seeing much fouling. So, hey, that is a good sign that the can is pushing a lot of the uh, debris and everything out the front of the can. Pretty much any gun. Uh, the, the higher the back pressure can is, the faster the gun is going to heat up. I mean, in terms of like the actual rail and being able to touch it without running a glove. So while it may be a lower back pressure can, yeah, the gun still heats up. That's 60 rounds that I just dumped right there in the course of like two to three minutes. So yeah, even with low back pressure, the gun's going to get toasty. Um, if you're really running a lot at that sort of cadence, you might want to throw a rail wrap or something on there. But yeah, heat's still a factor. I don't really think you can completely get around that. After about three hard mags, you're 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 at that point. You're ready to cool down a little bit. 180 plus 90, 270 rounds, and like not a lot of time. So after about three hard mags, like that's 90 rounds and I, I mean, again, less than five minutes, she gets warm, natural. That's what guns do, they produce heat. Or maybe that's, well, that's kind of sort of true. Probably cut that stupid line. Guys, if you are looking for any ways to help me not go bankrupt producing this channel, cause I'm gonna be honest with you, it gets pricey to do what we do. Um, so if you're looking for any ways to help uh, assist with that, we would love to sell you a house, preferably a big one that's real expensive, no pressure. I'm not saying you should spend more than you, than you have, but if you have like $5 million that you wanna spend on real estate, I'd love to help you sell that or buy that. Um, so hit us up, go to 1911syndicate.com. We have a handful of markets that we do service, including, give that reload a four out of 10, including uh, Vegas, Dallas, uh, Salt Lake, a couple areas around Florida and uh, Tennessee. You can check it out. If in doubt, just send us a message. We will help if we can. Um, and then we've also got our Patreon. That is basically just like tipping us like a bunch of hoes, like a bunch of hoes on OnlyFans, except you get less feet picks. Some, actually quite a few. You actually get quite a few. So anyway, check that out. We got that link below. Let's keep shooting the old gun. Can you imagine if metal targets had a soul and like this is what their whole existence is?
just getting shot all day. Even though they're bulletproof, the whole day. Like, it can feel that right now. All right, let's talk about mounting and, and attachment, right? So this is an area where I think the can really shines. And b and not the first to do this, but I am glad that they are doing this. So again, this one is the Silencer Shop exclusive. So the way that it comes from Silencer Shop is with a direct thread hub insert, okay? So that's how it comes set up. Why are we doing that? One, some people like to run their cans direct thread. Not really my thing, unless it was on like a dedicated bolt gun or something like that. But generally speaking, I'm still in the camp of, I want a QD system on my can because there's times when I just want to take my rifle bag today. Gun's a little too long to get in my rifle bag. If I could take the can off, I could get in the rifle bag, close it up. So simple things like that. That's why I like to have a QD system on my gun. It comes direct threat because um, it's operating on a hub system. So basically you'll see, we'll try to show you some B-roll or photos or something of this up here, but basically, hey, this whole system here can unthread. This is a BNT Surefire compatible um, hub insert, okay? But basically the notion is this can will take any industry standard, the thread pitches, you guys probably know it better than me at this point. It's 1.375 by 24. It's basically the standard um, thread pitch for doing like hub inserts like this. So if you get the can and you're like, hey, I don't want to run it direct thread. I'd actually like to run it on a QD system. Most manufacturers are going to make a system that you can now go get a muzzle device, you go get that system and you thread it into this can and now you can run that. So they sent me two different ones because they didn't know how I was gonna want to run it. So this is a A2 flash hider design. Uh, this will probably never get used because I would just prefer to run a different um, muzzle device personally. But hey, so this is, so you can run it on an A2. The one that I'm using is basically Surefire compatible. This can be a little bit confusing and I don't know the exact verbiage of, of how I would put this. So I'll just kind of wing it, which is to say that there is, some cohesion between B and T and Surefire mounts these days. Okay, it was kind of a big deal last year that this got, I don't know, approved or announced or, or however you want to call it. But basically the idea is this is B and T's mount. It is also their muzzle device, but it is a, what has historically been a Surefire footprint. So that if you got a gun and you've got a war comp on it or, or a Surefire muzzle device and you're like, oh cool, I just need to go get the hub insert from B and T, Cool, you can run the BNT mount on your Surefire war comp and vice versa. So the Surefire stuff and the BNT stuff are basically cross compatible now. It's using the same footprint. That's really good. Like that's a very good thing because it's a very sturdy, very robust mounting system. Um, we tightened the, the hell out of this thing before, before we put it on um, just to make sure, you know, it was going to be on there and no POI shift or anything like that. So um, I can't actually get it off right now to show you how it works, which is fine because YouTube's kind of finicky on that kind of stuff anyway. Okay, last two things. Um, repeatable point of impact shift. We talked about a little bit about that earlier in the video. I'm gonna be honest with you guys, uh, by the end of the day, I was ready to not do any more testing for, for groups. So uh, I have no reason to suggest this has shifted throughout the day. Um, the true test of that would be to, hey, zero the gun without the can on, throw the can on, see what the POI shift is, um, take the can off, put it back on, and basically do some round robins like that just to kind of see, are we getting a consistent um, point of impact shift when the can comes on and off? It's simply not testing I was able to do today. Do I care about that? Yes. Oftentimes though, I dedicate cans to guns. So truthfully, now that this is on, uh, this will probably not come off anytime soon. Like I will probably like literally just leave this can on for the next year and then eventually get bored and take it off and try something else, you know? So it's like, you know, I got no reason to take this off right now is the reality. Last thing would be flash. So again, for me as a civilian, Candidly, it's just not high on my priority list, you know, and this is one of those things where you have to sort of pick and choose what, what is important to you. If you're the United States Army, for example, and you're like, hey, we get into uh, gunfights overseas and a lot of them happen overseas and we would like to have as minimal flash coming out of our suppressors as possible to not give away our position. Yes, flashes, flash reduction is now very important. For me as a civilian, primarily shooting during the day and not shooting against any hostiles at night, it just doesn't make a big difference to me. Um, and obviously it's daylight, so it's really not something I could 
detect today. I didn't notice any egregious flash. I didn't notice anything whatsoever. I have seen footage, I uh, don't remember the channel, forgive me, but I did see footage of them testing one of the SRBS suppressors in low light, no light conditions. And it was actually great flash reduction. It was actually like very, very minimal, especially on a flow through can like that. It was actually quite impressive. So I would just say, I think it's gonna be great, but you gotta take it with a grain of salt. Okay, some final thoughts. Um, hey, look, very limited window of time that I've had on this because we wanted to get the video out and uh, just have something that kind of hit the market when the can came out. Um, what I would leave you with is, is this. It is impressive to me how nimble B&T is as a company. So again, to, to just kind of emphasize the point, at SHOT Show, they had, that's five to six months ago, they had new SRBS cans. Based on feedback and everything, within the past five to six months, they've already come out with a new design to go, okay, uh, feedback noted, we think we can even do a little bit better. And now here we are. I mean, it's like, it's, crazy because i'm telling you inside of the gun industry companies get big and bloated and they lose that ability to to pivot and adapt in any sort of a quick fashion and b and t it, it's kind of mind-blowing how quick that they can pivot and come out with new stuff again coming out with 600 suppressors over the over the history of the company is insane so hey it's cool. At the end of the day, like, is this something you should get? I don't. I, I don't really know that that I can answer that for you. I, I think suppressors are so unique to the individual and what it is that you're looking for and what the style of gun is. There's so many variables that it's like, hey, here's the facts as stated on the can today. You now decide um, if it's for you or not. Um, Again, if you dig these, hey, Silencer Shop exclusive, and they've got the 7.62, the 7.62 tie. Um, so check that out, peruse around on there. And I guess with that said, we will see you guys in the next video.